Ladies and gentlemen, those who are not so sure, Cass Piper Cassidy coming at you from the kitchen. Re-recording. Uh, I originally recorded what I'm about to do out in the garden, but it was very, very, very windy. And you couldn't hear a feckin' word that I was saying. So there was half an hour's recording down the bloody drain. Uh, thanks to, uh, I can't remember the fella's name actually, but somebody commented and said, uh, you need to fire your sound producer. I was like, what? So I had to listen to it and went, yep, he's right. I need to fire myself. So uh, yeah, maybe I will fire myself. Today we're going to be talking about a number of articles uh, the main articles, as you can tell by the title, uh, is all about HU Tobacco. Um, I received a little delivery, uh, four different blends. You can see them in the background. Ooh! So we're going to be talking about them briefly. I'm smoking a little bowl of uh, Nashville. This is actually the second bowl. Whenever I smoke this pipe, I always tend to have two bowls, one after the other, because it's very small. It's probably my smallest bowl, I would think. Where are my matches? Jeez, there they are. So, get her lit. Yeah, baby. But anyway, how's everyone doing? All good, I hope. So yeah, I had to record indoors. Because it was so windy. And it is a lovely day out there, but I have a feeling it's a little bit windy. I was out walking the dogs earlier and it was windy enough. So, this is, of course, my uh, good lord, uh, Ali Berenci pipe. Uh, it's getting a good bit of colour on it. I haven't really been smoking it too much, but obviously I smoked it a lot. It was my one and only Meerschaum pipe for a while, so that's how it got so dark. But uh, I've been uh, smoking my mirrors more, and this one's going to get a turn. I'm going to smoke nothing but each of my mirrors for a month. It started with the March Meerschaum Madness. I smoked my black uh, Meerschaum. For March and April is the big Unar Meerschaum, so I'm sure May will be this one. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get straight to it. We'll talk about the first couple of HU tobaccos. So the one I'm smoking at the minute, we'll get it out of the way quickly because you've already heard me ramble on about it before. Hmm. Let me get this so I can open the uh, tins. There you go. Nashville County. Nashville County is a combination of Virginia, Burley and Perique. It tastes to me like a uh, Burley blend. It's very, very sweet. I'll show you the cut. It's kind of like a broken flake. Uh, let's see. Where am I? So, yeah, lighting isn't too good here, but you can kind of see the cut there. It's okay. It's got bits of broken flake in there. There's quite a big one. I think that's, uh, I think actually it's the, um, the burly, the flakes. I've got a feeling, and the rest is Virginia and Perique. I'm not too sure, though. Could be the other way around. But it's a beautiful looking blend. Smells of cocoa nibs and honey. Absolutely delicious. Let me see if I can turn the lights on a bit here. Get a bit more. One second. That might be a bit better. Yeah, I think it is. A little bit. So, let's see what uh, 
tobacco reviews say about it. So, Burley is seldom found as a main ingredient in natural tobacco blends. Nashville County Ready Rub Flake brilliantly disproves such misconceptions. 60% strong flavoured and sweet Kentucky Burley grades determine the character of this traditional American blend. Multi Red Virginia's beautiful uh, finish. Its taste is defined by a smoky flavour with a touch of licorice. A lot of people say there is a licorice topping. I don't pick it up at all. I get more kind of citrus and cocoa nibs. Hence the nutty burliness. Uh, it's just a burly blend for me. Uh, this medium strong blend is perfect for a relaxing smoke and brilliant interpretation of the traditional spirit of the South. Yeah, sounds about right. The next blend, actually I'll leave the best till last. We'll go for Louisiana Broken. There she is. Louisiana Broken is a uh, Virginia, Kentucky Perique blend. So vapor with some Perique. And uh, the great thing about these tins that's it. You don't have to jar it. Well, in my opinion, anyway, a lot of people on uh, tobacco reviews will say, oh, you know, the tobacco tastes funny from the tin. Uh, people say that it dries out. You need to get them in a jar. No. Hans Wiedermann himself. I refer you to uh, Professor Jeremiah and Uncle Phil's brilliant and with the help of John Panzer. Their brilliant interview with uh, Hans Wiedermann. Go to Professor Jeremiah's site. If I remember, I will put it in the bucket. But there you go. He says it's good for 10 years, the tobacco in these tins. So, again, it's a broken flake. But there's not as many chunks. Although there still are some. And this one, the smell is, there is a bit of tart vinegariness there. I love that. What, whatever happened to me? I love that. I used to hate that. Beautiful. The next one is a blend called Port Latakia. And it is, uh, it's Latakia, I think it's 50 or 60%, I can't quite remember. Uh, Latakia, Virginia, Black Cavendish and Oriental. Let's see what they say on... Uh, An English blend with 50% Latakia, Virginia and Oriental grades give this blend a prominent sweet taste that initially forced the Latakia into the background. It is only after some time of smoking that the Latakia gets the upper hand. But it is, there is a bit of a topping here as well. I, I, Uncle Phil reckons it's coffee. I would think it's kind of coffee, but maybe with some caramel as well. It's really nice. Kind of a ready rub we're going for now. But yeah, you can see it's a fairly high uh, concentration of Latakia. The Latakia in taste and smell is reminds me of Germain's. So that's how, uh, in my opinion, that's the quality of it. I think it's very high quality. It's kind of a coffee note or caramel note in there as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. Not my favorite out of all of them. Uh, but that's just me, I think. And uh, I see. The 
the last plan that I got is Director's Cut. And it has really shine, shone through. It's a phenomenal blend. Let's have a word from our sponsors and then we'll talk all about it for a while. Oh, Lord. So the final director's cut we were talking about, it's a bit of a kitchen sink blend. It has Virginia, Burley, Perique, Kentucky. So yeah, quite a lot of constituent parts there. The, uh, I'll put this down for a second. The cut is quite unusual. It has some spun cut I believe them to be vapor coins. You can see there's quite a lot joined on to each other uh, in my blend. But yeah, kind of would put you in mind of the little similar coins, spun cut that you would find in Three Nuns and New Minster blends, that kind of thing. There's also a Broken Flake there, which to me I, th I think is the dark fired leaf. Or it could be the burly, but uh, no, I think that's the Kentucky. So vapor coins, broken flake Kentucky, and then you've got this gorgeous background of Virginia burly. Uh, yeah, have a look. Absolutely beautiful. This is my uh, favorite. I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? Is it my favorite? I mean, it's a completely different blend, but it's... You owe it to yourself if you haven't tried any HU blends or German blends. Just try Director's Cut. Just to get an idea of uh, Hans Wiedermann's blending skills. I don't think the guy had any formal... Uh, he didn't come from any Kohlhaus and Kopp. I know they blend for him, but he... Uh, so they, they do all the... They make the... The, the products for them but he didn't work there or anything he's not coming from any big blending house in Germany he's um, just a pipe smoker who decided to start making tobacco as far yeah well give that um, I will definitely try I'll write it down here somewhere to uh, stick it in the bucket so give that interview a watch it's it's very enjoyable watch uh, let me read to you H.U. Director's Cut, so. The traditional Virginia Perique curly cut forms its basis, being in prime condition as a rope before it's cut into curlies. So I was, right? The very expressive and sweet Virginia grades in connection with a strong Perique core of the curly cuts makes an interesting blend, together with the burly grades and the sugary Virginia loose cut. Underlining the robust and elemental character of this director's cut, a whiff of fire-cured Virginias renders the final touch to this blend. Oh, I see. The result is a slightly sweet and spicy blend. Wholeheartedly agree. Surprising with tremendous varieties in taste. Wholeheartedly agree. The director's cut is attractive for those who are looking for the special taste adventure. Strong, spicy, multi-layered. It's one of those smokes, guys. Not that you necessarily have to sit down and think about it. You can just chuff this stuff as you walk the dogs. Obviously, you can do whatever the f hell you want. But 
you will have those smokes where you're just sitting there and and uh, you realize how varied and layered, just like tobacco reviews say, uh, f- phenomenal smoke. I can't recommend it enough. You owe it to yourself to try this blend. Director's Cut, Google it and see where you can get it. So, uh, that's about it for HU. Anyway, I'll get this going again. The other interesting thing that, uh, incidentally, incidental thing, I don't know what I'm, what am I saying? So I've recently been, uh, taking a trip every so often. Uh, so these are CBD infused drinks. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. They are quite expensive as well. I think that they vary. Search for it on Amazon and you'll find different prices, but they have their own store on Amazon. I think their least uh, popular flavor is elderflower because it's cheaper than the rest. I think it's about 16 uh, pounds sterling for 24 of those, whereas these are maybe 24 pounds for so a pound a tin, basically. These are peach and ginger, and I've also had the uh, lemongrass and basil lemongrass and basil for you yanks and uh i actually was really fond of the basil i actually uh whenever you drink the lemongrass and basil you can mistake the basil for the cbd it just tastes like you're drinking weed uh so that's what i thought that flavor was but having tried this one this one is like a a ginger ale so it must be the basil, not the uh, CBD, that give it that weird flavor. But yeah, usually things like this, including pure CBD oil, don't really do much for me. I don't notice anything. I don't calm down, and I, uh, I'm just the same. Um, I've tried everything. I, I mean, I, I'm a long-term anxious bloke. I've been on uh, all sorts. Uh, uh, you know, counselling and medication throughout my life, and uh, uh, what what is it? What am I trying to say here? Yeah, I mean, you, you obviously try recreationally things like this as well, and usually to no avail. But these actually, for me personally, I don't think it's a CBD. <laughs> I think it's um, it could be the L-thanine, L-thanine, whatever that says. So as you can see, it's got some ginseng as well. What is that? Chamomile and turmeric. So yeah, theanine, whatever it is, I think might be doing the trick. Because I've had all the other things, ginseng, turmeric and chamomile. I used to make really strong turmeric tea for myself. Didn't really do much, so something's working anyway. So if you're a highly strung person, can't stop thinking about random shit and uh, get worried all the time or whatever, give these a go. See if they work for you as well. Yeah. The uh, the weather's been very nice here in Northern Ireland for the past week or so. Still nice out there now. Blue skies, as you can see. So yeah, I've been smoking a lot of HU. I can't complain at all, folks. I can't recommend them enough. Uh, Hans Federman's a genius. Uh, I've heard uh, a lot of things being bandied about, such as they're the new McClelland, you know. And uh, I don't think I, I don't. I've only tried one or two McClelland blends through Uncle Phil and things like that, and. Uh, 
you know, like I can't say all that, but if if what they mean by that is this is a really high grade tobacco and I think they're really on to something with their blending, I completely agree. The Germans seem to know what they're doing. When you have companies like uh, Dan Tobacco and uh, Peter Heinrichs and um, this, HU, fantastic stuff. I really, really can't recommend it enough. Mm. But yeah, I hope you're well. I hope you enjoyed our little foray into uh, HU tobaccos. I'm going to order some more uh, and smoke them and see what they're like. Uh, I know Uncle Phil has uh, check out his channel. He's actually reviewed quite a lot of the African range. These are the warehouse, the original warehouse blends, I think they're known as. Yeah, where does it say? Yeah, original warehouse blend. So, I mean, yeah. Give it a go, folks. But listen, thanks for tuning in, as usual. Uh, peace Accord. We just uh, recorded one last night, so it'll be up over the weekend. Uh, we're all good. Um, there's also another little uh, video in store. It's going to be a, a review of a tobacco with uh, me, Uncle Phil, and Chris. I'll not say any more about it. See what you think. That's Prancing Piper, Uncle Phil Seller, and Cass Piper Cassidy. Uh, yeah, look out for that. It'll probably be, might be here, or it might be on Uncle Phil's channel. Um, yeah, enjoy yourselves. Hope you're having uh, lots of good tobacco to smoke and check out the HU when you get a chance, especially the director's cut. And if you like Burley, Nashville County. So yeah, have a great week. Toodle pip. <laughs>